JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week November the 22nd until November the 26th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any, to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, according to the White House, this will be the week during which we will get to know who the next Fed chief uh, will be, with the US President Biden weighing whether to keep uh, Jerome Powell or pass the torch to Fed Governor uh, Leil Brainard. The preliminary PMIs will also be closely watched, especially in the Eurozone, as fresh lockdown uh, measures have increased concerns over the bloc's economic performance. In New Zealand, the RBNZ is widely expected to hike interest rates again, but the question is by how much? Now let's take things uh, from the beginning. Today, today appears to be a relatively light day in terms of economic data and releases, but uh, that doesn't mean that investors will not, will not lock uh, gaze on their monitors for any potential market moving headlines. Besides news uh, that COVID infections in Europe have soared recently prompting to fresh lockdowns, something that raises concerns over the future performance of an already fragile economy, there were also headlines last week that in the US, President Joe Biden may choose the next Federal, the next federal uh, Reserve Chair before Thanksgiving, which is on Thursday. Biden has been weighing whether to keep uh, Powell, whose term ends in February, or pass the torch to Fed Governor Leigh Brainard. Brainard is the candidate of choice for, progre for progressive Democrats, while Powell has the backing of moderate uh, Democrats as well as Republicans. In any case, Brainard uh, is concerned to be more dovish than Powell on monetary policy, and thus, if she's appointed, market participants may push back their rate hike expectations and thereby sell some dollars. At its latest meeting, uh, the Fed began tapering its uh, quantitative easing purchases, and although Chair Powell said that they will stay patient on interest rates, he did not close the door on any, uh, to the likelihood of a rate hike just after the tapering is over. Now, since that meeting, data showed that the labor market continued to improve and consumer prices kept accelerating in October, while last week, retail sales for, uh, for the same month rose well more than anticipated. On top of that, last week, Fed uh, Vice Chair Richard Clarita said that increasing the tapering pace might be worth discussing at the upcoming gathering, while Chicago Fed uh, President Charles Evans, who is known as a policy dove, said that he is now more open-minded to supporting hiking rates next year. Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic has also signaled his support for a rate hike during the summer months of uh, next year. And according to the Fed Fund futures, market participants now anticipate a 25 basis points hike to be delivered in July, while they are fully pricing in another one, another 25 basis points hike uh, to be delivered by, by the end of the year. Thus, there is room for slowing down that expectations path in case Brainard is chosen, uh, chosen as the next uh, Fed chief. Now, in case Powell stays in charge, nothing will change in terms of interest, uh, interest rate expectations, and thus we don't expect a major uh, do dollar rally at the time of a potential announcement. The currency may slowly continue drifting north, conditional upon more data and headlines supporting the case for a rate hike around the middle of uh, next year. 
Now on Tuesday, the main items on the agenda may be the preliminary PMIs for November from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. Getting the ball uh, rolling uh, with the Eurozone, both the manufacturing and services indices are expected to have continued sliding, resulting in the fourth consecutive slide in the composite index. Specifically, the composite index is anticipated to have slid to 53.1 from 54.2. This will add to concerns that the latest supply shortages and bottlenecks have left their marks on the euro area economy and combined with the latest lockdown measures around the block could add more credence uh, to the recent remarks by ECB President Lagarde that tightening monetary policy now to rein inflation could choke off uh, the eurozone's uh, recovery. Thus, with all that in mind, we believe that uh, sliding PMIs could prompt Euro traders to push further back their bets over a potential rate hike by the ECB next year and thereby keep the Euro under selling pressure. Now, moving to the UK, both the manufacturing and services indices are forecast to have held steady, which is unlikely to, al to alter market pricing with regards to the Bank of England's future course of, future course of action. At its latest meeting, the Bank of England decided not to hike uh, interest rates despite, despite market participants assigning an 80% um, chance for such a move ahead of the meeting and instead said that this could happen in uh, coming months. However, soon thereafter, Governor Andrew Bailey said that they are still on a path towards raising interest rates, remarks which combined with further acceleration in inflation last week encouraged, encouraged uh, investors to place bets over a December hike. According to the UK overnight index swaps uh, forward uh, yield curve, such a move is nearly fully priced in uh, for December and for that to change the PMIs may need to miss their forecasts uh, by a decent uh, margin. Now, flying to the US, in contrast uh, to the Eurozone here, both the manufacturing and uh, services PMIs are forecast to have uh, increased, underscoring the resilience of the US economy and perhaps adding more validity to the view over a potential rate hike by the Fed in the middle of next year. Now, on Wednesday, on Wednesday, during the early Asian session, we have a central bank, uh, a central bank deciding on interest rates, and this is the RBNZ. Back in October, this bank raised interest rates by 25 basis points, as was widely expected, noting that further removal of monetary policy stimulus is expected over time. Now, with the New Zealand CPI surging to 4.9% in the third quarter and the unemployment rate hitting a record low during the same quarter, market participants are almost certain that officials will uh, hit the hike button again this week. The main, question, the main question, though, is whether they will add 25 or 50 basis points. According to market chatter, there is around, uh, there is around a 40% uh, chance for a double hike. In our view, despite the domestic economy performing very well, there are other major economies still facing problems, one of which is China, New Zealand's biggest trading partner. Thus, we believe that there is no reason for RBNZ uh, policymakers to rush into delivering more than a 25 basis points increase. This could disappoint those expecting more and may result in a pullback in the Kiwi at the time of the announcement. However, conditional upon the bank staying willing to continue normalizing its uh, policy, the retreat may stay limited and short-lived. After all, the RBNZ will be the only major central bank raising interest rates uh, post-pandemic, post, uh, not once, but twice. Later in the day, the FOMC releases the minutes of its uh, latest meeting. However, given that we got data and remarks by several Fed officials in the aftermath of the meeting supporting the case for a hike uh, mid-2022, we would treat the minutes as outdated. We prefer to focus more on upcoming data like the PMIs on Tuesday and the core PC index, the Fed's favorite inflation metric, which comes out a few hours ahead of uh, the minutes. Now, Thursday is, uh, thank is uh, Thanksgiving uh, Day in the US and thus Wall Street uh, will stay closed. Elsewhere, the only releases worth mentioning are Germany's final GDP for uh, the third quarter, which is expected to be revised down to 1.5% quarter over quarter from 1.8%, uh, and the minutes from the latest ECB gathering. We expect these minutes to pass unnoticed, uh, to pass, uh, unnoticed as well. 
Euro traders are likely to pay more attention to the PMIs and any headlines surrounding the new, the new restrictive measures due to the surging COVID cases around the, around the block. After all, ECB President Lagarde was adamant that now is not the time to start thinking about raising interest rates and we, and we don't expect the minutes to paint a, a, more, uh, a more hoggish picture. Now, finally on Friday, the holiday shopping season officially starts with the Black Friday sales around the globe. Although we will not get any instant numbers over, uh, over how strong consumer spending was, we will closely watch the upcoming uh, retail sales data. A search in US retail sales during the month of October indicated that Americans, uh, Americans uh, started shopping early and further strength in retail sales during November could add more credence to the view that the US economy is performing very well. At this point, it is worth mentioning that Wall Street will close early on Friday. Now elsewhere, uh, during the Asian morning, we have Japan's Tokyo CPIs for November and Switzerland's uh, GDP for the third quarter. No forecast is uh, available for the headline Tokyo CPI, while the core one is anticipated to have accelerated to 0.4% year over year from 0.1%. As for Switzerland's data, expectations are for GDP to have accelerated to 2% from 1.8%. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and, um, and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around uh, 9 o'clock a.m. GMT. So goodbye, have a nice day and a greater week. JFT, just fair and direct.